here we have our Sony via 13 flip. We're going to open up and explore the insides. The reason why this is called the flip, as you can see here, it can flip now like that and turn into a tablet form and flip back to a laptop form. There is a 14 inch model and a 15 inch model as well. And before you start, remember to put your laptop on something soft so you don't damage it and scratch it while you turn it, spin it around and turn it around. And we're going to flip to the back to start off. So we have to remove all the rubber feet first. There's two rubber feet on the top and there's a long band of rubber feet on the bottom as there's screws underneath it. There's I believe 12 screws, screws in total. Remember not to put your feet somewhere dirty as there's adhesive on it so you can stick it back on afterwards. I'm just pointing up the, out the screws and like I said before there should be 12 screws. Remember there's a few different types of screws so put them separately so you don't get confused. So now that we've removed all the screws you have to lift it up on one side first. As you can see, lift it up the same direction I lifted up and take it off. As on the other side, the headphone jack, just showing you now. The headphone jack actually makes it harder for it to remove, so you should remove it one side only and put it back one side only. So this is the battery, which you can remove, the fan, the CPU is underneath, these black dots of the RAM, there's the wireless card, and here is the hard drive, it fits into this, which is an M.2 at 80 millimeters long, Mine, my hard drive was already removed, so I just put it back to show you. To remove the hard drive, you have to remove the screw. As and you just take out the hard drive. Now to remove the battery, there's two screws holding the battery down. There's actually more, but by removing the case, you remove the other screws that hold the battery down as well. The battery can be replaced if you want to know. So after removing two screws, you just lift the battery up and it comes off. So now we're going to remove the wireless card. These black things are actually stick tape. You can remove them if you want. It's just to hold the cable down so the cable doesn't flop around. We're going to remove the antenna first. Remove the whole antenna. So there's one screw holding the wireless card down. The wireless card is the M.2 slot as well. And after removing the screw, you just drag out the wireless card and it comes out. Just wiggle it a little bit and it'll come out. So now we're going to remove the heatsink for the CPU and which connects to the fan. There's three screws holding the fan down. These three screws come off and the three screws holding the heatsink down does not come off. Here's the third screw for the fan. It's actually under the cable. So just look for it carefully and you'll be able to find it. Now we remove the heatsink screws which don't come off. Remember to remove the fan cable. 
I already cleaned my thermal paste off my CPU and off my heatsink already. We're going to clean it off properly. So now we're going to remove the LCD cable, this thing. So we can remove the LCD from the motherboard. So just remove the cables out of the way. And there's two screws on each side holding the hinge down. So when you remove the screws, just lift the laptop up a bit to lift the hinge up. Don't move it up all the way as you might damage your laptop. Just leave, lift it up enough so you can remove the top from the bottom. Now to remove the camera, there's two screws holding the camera down and there's this black rubber thing. The rubber thing is just hold, held down by double sided stick tape so you can just remove it. So you just rip it off and it comes off. It comes relatively pretty easy and there's a clip underneath it. So you probably need a prying tool as it's pretty small. I'm just going to get my prying tool now as um, I was unable to remove it with my fingers. And you just take it out. If it's the first time you're removing it, it's quite hard. So that's basically it. Now I'm going to show you how to remove the motherboard. I'm actually not going to remove the motherboard itself, but I'll show you where all the screws are for you to remove it if you wish to. I'm just pointing out all the screws now. Remember, you're going to have to remove all the ribbon cables as well. So I'm just pointing out all the ribbon cables now that you will have to remove if you wanted to remove them on the board. Now we're going to reapply thermal paste as you have to reapply thermal paste every time and remember to clean it before you reapply thermal paste. Every time you remove your heating you must reapply thermal paste and you need to remove the old thermal paste from it. So for the small one for the big one, you put half a rice grain on it, just put it in the center, don't need to spread it out. And for the little small one, just tap it. When it leaves, it leaves a mark, then that's good enough. So now, on the heating, there's numbers. There's number one, two, three. I don't know if you're able to see in the video or not, but there's one, two, and three. So you have to follow the numbers when you scroll back together. This way, it spreads out the thermal paste evenly. So try not to press down on it and align it first. And then after you align it, you can press down on it. 
and screw the numbers in order. Remember to plug your fan power cable back in or else you're going to get an error message. And that's basically it. This, this, this assembly is relatively really easy. There's not much to it. Once you open it up, besides the back, the back has a lot of screws. Remember to leave your rubber feet somewhere clean so you don't get dust all over it. I've got cat hair all over mine and it doesn't stick back properly. So that's basically the only caution message there is. And thanks for watching.